Now forgetting the entire world, let's focus our attention on the art of mind management. We all wish to succeed in life. That means we wish to feel good. We wish to be able to think well. We wish to be able to do good. This is a universal common need. Because life has been created by God, hence life is sacred. All of us, as tiny parts of God, wish to be perfect like He is perfect. How do we attain that kind of success? Some people have a lot and yet they fail miserably. Some people have very little, and yet they lead rich and successful lives. I will give you one instance of either case so that we can draw conclusions from it. First, the first kind. The typical example I came across was of Elvis Presley. He was the icon of a generation. He was called the king of rock and roll or more simply the king. He was blessed with exceptionally good looks, a golden voice, as a result of which he became a super celebrity. He had amazing wealth exceedingly popular. And yet, what was his life? Here's a description of an average day of Elvis Presley during his last four years. Having performed on the stage when he would return, he would tell his retinue of servants, give me the first hit. They would give him in a paper different colored crystals, different barbiturates. And they would give him a shot of drugs under his shoulder blade. Then a race would begin. How much he could eat and drink before he fell asleep. He would then fall off asleep. And the morning four o'clock he would wake up. Now, with less enthusiasm, because he was drugged, he would say, give me the second hit. They would again jab an injection under his shoulder blade and give him some crystals to eat. That would keep him knocked off through the morning. Around 12 or so, third time when he woke up, whether he asked or not, they would give him the third hit. In the early night, he would take some chemicals to bring himself back into energy and go and give his performance on stage and then repeat this process. His closest associates, when asked why does he do this, said he is so unhappy he wishes to forget himself. That is why he does it. Here is the example of someone who had so many blessings and yet his inner life was a miserable failure. Now contrast this with somebody who was his contemporary. This was a lady whom most of you have heard of. Her name was Helen Keller. Helen Keller, at the age of 18 months, she caught a virus. 
As a result of which she lost her sight and her hearing. Two of the five senses became dead. So from the age of one and a half years till the age of six, little Helen Keller used to throw tantrums. She didn't have means to communicate. When parents would touch her, she would go into a tantrum. As a solution, her mother took her to a school for the physically challenged. Anne Sullivan was the principal of the school. She touched Helen Keller and little Helen again through a tantrum. Anne Sullivan told the mother, leave her with me tonight. I will take care of her. So when the mother had gone, Anne Sullivan placed little Helen's left hand under the water faucet. And with the right hand, she drew indicated water. For the first time in her life, little Helen understood that physical entities have designations or names. A light went on inside her. She was thrilled on this little bit of learning. She wanted to learn more. That night she learned the names of 30 objects. She continued to keep learning. She learned Braille. She went on to become a graduate and started doing philanthropy around the world. As she became famous, she desired to give lectures. So she wanted to learn how to speak. She did not know how to hear. And yet she learned how to speak. And she delivered lectures around the world. She lived till a ripe age. And at the end she said, Life has been so beautiful. I have enjoyed every single day. See? From one perspective, she had so much less than others. And from another perspective, she had made her life a success on these three parameters. To feel good, to think good, to do good. So, to be successful internally and externally. God has bestowed all of us with many assets, our body, our resources, our familial social status, our set of skills and knowledge. Very often we sideline these, we underestimate these. And we think, I am not happy because of this, this, this. You know, this guy doesn't behave properly, that's why I am not happy. The situation is not exactly right for me, that is why I am justified in having negative thoughts. God is not taking care of me so much, that is the problem. In other words, we tend to rationalize for our negative thinking by blaming externals. If we do that, we will never succeed in the art of mind management. Because the first step is to take responsibility. For what I think, for what I feel, I am responsible. I should not blame anybody else. I was once taking a walk in India. I was crossing a bridge and I found a person in tattered clothes standing on the railing of the bridge. He seemed to be gathering his resolve to take a leap into the water. Seeing what he's about to do, I screamed, Stop! 
Now he hesitated. And the moment was lost. You see, people who are thinking of committing suicide, if they lose the moment, the thought process changes. I said, jump down. He jumped down. 